What's going on everybody? John Arapola here with My MMA News and I'm in a very good mood this week because I had a streak get broken over the weekend. Whenever I interview a fighter before a fight, I feel like they've been losing recently and it's been so stressful to see that happen. But now that streak's over. Joining me again today is Andrea Lee picking up a big win at UFC 262 over the weekend, defeating Antonina Shevchenko by a second round submission. Let's bring Andrea in here and Andrea... Congratulations on the win. Thank you for the time and thank you for breaking the streak. Yes, you're, yes, thank you. You know, I'm glad we, we both broke a streak together, you know, <laughs> helping each other out. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's a, it's a streak for you as well. You snapped a three fight losing skit. And of, co of course, those three fights too, they were so narrow, uh, a few split decisions in there. Uh, we'll start there. Just talk about the emotions of getting that win and snapping that losing streak. Man, lots of emotions, you know, I mean, I, um, after I, I mean, it's when the ref called the fight, you know, I was just, man, I just wanted to sit there on the canvas there for a little bit and just kind of take it all in, you know, it was just, it was just such a relief, you know, to, uh, be able to finish the fight in the second round against a, a, a great and dominant fighter, you know, um, um, uh, for me, I mean, it meant everything. I, did not need another loss on my record. You know, I mean, I was on the verge probably of getting cut. So, um, definitely a lot of emotions after that fight. And, uh, I'm still even like on cloud nine about it. You know, I'm still, still just very happy, but you know, now it's, it's time to start thinking about the next, you know, but I, but I still want to enjoy this one. <laughs> I bet. And uh, we're going to talk about what's next, a little bit about celebration stuff in just a little bit. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about was something that we spoke about in the pre-fight interview, which was when you said how you were just looking to go out there and have fun. You thought that when you were in that losing streak, that that kind of got away from you a little bit. Just how much fun did you have inside of the octagon on Saturday? Because it looked really fun. You, you could tell, you know, you were happy and smiling. It's, it seemed like you really enjoyed yourself in there. I, I really was. I, from, from start to the finish, you know, it was like, I didn't really feel, I didn't feel the nerves, you know? I mean, I was, I wasn't nervous at all. It was just, it was such a strange, it was a, it was a familiar feeling because I mean, I'm, I'm it's what I'm used to, you know, like going into the cage, but like the last couple of fights, like I said, I, I have been, I felt nervous and um, I felt like my head was in space. Like I wasn't really like thinking about, I what I was doing in the fight, you know, uh, but this time it was completely different. I was back on track. I could like, I was reading everything that she was doing before she was doing it. I felt like, um, and I just feel like personally, I felt like I was a step ahead, you know, and, um, my movement was good. I was explosive and I could hear my coaches, my corner, you know, and I was even like, they were, when they were telling me what they wanted me to do, I was replaying, like I was, I was re, wording it in my head I was like repeating it in my head so that I would be prepared to do that in the next couple of seconds you know it's like just just leading up to it so they tell me that they wanted me to throw like I'll just say um uh I don't know like a hero or something like that a hero is kind of like a superman punch and I'm thinking okay hero hero so whenever I get ready I'm going to do that you know I just felt so focused and honed in and you know this this camp you know, it was a really good camp. And I, I felt that going into that fight and I felt it after the first round too. Cause, cause I, um, I just remember thinking, man, I'm not that tired. I can't believe that was five minutes. It felt like we just started, you know? Well, what's interesting too, uh, I do want to ask about that second round, uh, in a second here, but you were saying how, you know, you felt fresh afterwards that opening round. I thought when I was sitting there watching it, it seemed like it was pretty action-packed. Like, you guys really started going at it, you know, from the get-go. And it was a pretty close round, too. The judges did score that to you uh, in your favor, which didn't matter because, obviously, you have to finish the next round there. But I did want to get your thoughts on that opening round because it seemed like you guys, you know, you said before the fight you thought it was going to be a good show for the fans. And, yeah, it, it was. That opening round was definitely a good round to watch. Well, good. And, and that's what I wanted. You know, um, you know, I just went out there thinking, you know, I just wanted to throw, you know, I wanted to, match her or, or, or like match her strikes or, or throw more strikes, you know? And so opening up, you know, I went out there, you know, throwing kicks, you know, just to kind of like get her off her game and just be aggressive and pressure and cut her off, which is what I was doing. And then, um, you know, I just happened to see her 
like it, she threw that spin back fist very quickly. You know, I mean, if that had landed, no telling what would have happened. But luckily, like I kind of saw her getting ready to do it. So I was able to duck under it just in time, you know, to get the double unders and then push her against the cage. And then I was able to work that inside trip. And, um, you know, I picked her up, pulled her away from the cage because I didn't want her to be able to use the cage to her advantage. And uh, I knew that if I had her out in the open, that I would be able to like do some damage, throw some elbows before the bell rang. Um, and that's what I did. It was just, you know, a really well first round. It was just a very good first round for me, you know, and I'm, I'm pleased with it. I'm happy with it. I think the fans liked it. <laughs> before I get into the submission here, I do want to touch on one of the things that you just brought up there. You were, you know, you were so strategic and just explaining a lot of that there. Was this something that you felt like, man, I, we were saying that I'm having fun before, like that everything just came natural to you because it didn't seem as you were explaining that, like you knew, okay, she's in this position, I need to do this, as opposed to maybe having your coaches screaming out, hey, get her against, you know, get her away from the fence, look for her trip. Like you knew, like you, you were prepared enough that you, you were comfor comfortable in your own abilities to just go out there and do it on instinct instead of having a coach scream to you. Like, is that fair to say? Because that's, yeah. that's how it sounded. Yes. Cause like I've said before, I, I typically I'm able to coach myself and like in a lot of, a lot of, and all the fights that I've ever done really great. in, I have, I can coach myself in my own fights. You know, it's like, I know what to do. And in my head, I'm calculating these things. But like I, I also stated before in the last couple of fights, I haven't felt like I, I have been doing that. Like I've been relying on like my coaches, but at the same time, it's like, I, I haven't been hearing all of like anything that they were saying most of the time. And I just, you know, um, I just feel like, you know, in this fight, I was, you know, back to me, I was able to coach myself. I was able to hear my coaches, you know, I was able to do what my coaches wanted me to do. I feel like that just made the, the fight work out so much more, you know, perfectly for me because everything was just right, you know, and hopefully, you know, it continues to be just right like that. And now let's get into this finish here uh, that we've been putting off the finish for, for a, a little bit here. Uh, you said in the lead up to the fight, you had the advantage in the grappling and wrestling department. When you got that takedown, did you know, this is it, this is my moment, I could finish this right here? I did, yes. And, I, and I, I knew that I still had enough time on the clock to get that finish. Um, and I, honestly, I thought that I was, I was going to be able to get it a lot sooner. I thought for sure I was going to be able to, you know, tighten that, triangle up and, and get her to tap, but she was not going to tap. Like I could like, even though like Joe Rogan, he kept saying it, like, I need to pull down on the head. I need to pinch my knees together. You know, I, I need to tighten the squeeze. I was doing that. I pulled the head, you know, even if I wasn't ho holding it for like, cause a lot of the, a lot of people say, you know, you have to like hold it for at least like six seconds or, you know, six to 10 seconds, whatever they're going to tap within eight seconds but she was still breathing and I could hear her. So I'm like, if I can still hear her breathing, then I'm squeezing for no reason. I'm going to blow out everything. You know, my legs are already getting tired. So I would let go and then transition to something else. And, and I kept trying that. But um, and in between all that, you know, I felt like maybe I should do some damage. I don't like in case, you know, she doesn't ever tap in case I don't ever get anything. I could, you know, soften her up, do some damage. Maybe something will present itself, you know, and, and I'll, maybe I'll be able to get the arm bar or Kimura or whatever. And luckily, you know, it ended up being the arm bar, but she was hard to, she's hard to choke. It's like, she has like a really slender neck, I guess. And it just makes it hard because Caitlin Chikagian even had a hard time trying to submit her when they fall. Yeah. And one of the things I guess that worked out then in your favor there, like you're saying, so the, the neck is tough to get the choke, but She's very long. She has very long limbs. So did that kind of make it easier than to get a hold of the arm then given how like her arm length or yes. was that how that kind yeah. of played out? Yeah. It made it easier for me to be able to put her arm under my armpit, you know, so that I could get that arm locked for the, uh, for, for the, um, for me to be able to bridge and, um, extend the arm. You know, it really does help a lot, you know, having her long arms. <laughs> So I do want to ask you about Antonina and Valentina. Uh, of course, everybody knows that they're sisters, a great dynamic duo. They're always each other's corners. They seem like they have to be one of the, like, the sweetest people around, though. It seems like they're always very nice to everybody. Obviously, Antonina's on the losing end uh, of a fight, though, uh, in this instance here. But 
Were they nice to you afterwards? Like, did you just have a nice little talk and a nice little interaction afterwards? Because it seems like they're usually pretty cordial to, towards everybody. Well, I, you know, we, we hugged afterwards, you know, and yeah, I thanked her. You know, we thanked each other, uh, she, you know, and she nodded. Uh, but no, we didn't really get to speak after the fight. Uh, I think she went to the hospital afterwards, you know, to get her arm looked at. So I didn't really get to talk to Valentina either, or I wanted to shake their, I wanted to shake Valentina and her coach's hand before, because I, I typically do that at, at, no matter win or lose, you know, you always kind of want to do that after a fight. And uh, I went over there, but at that time, the, the cameras were in their face. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll just do it after I get my hand raised. But after, after I got my hand raised, you know, the only person I was able to, sh you know, handshake, the only person's hand I was able to shake was Antonina's. And then like her coach and Valentina had already like started walking out of the cage. So I did not get to have any interaction with, with Valentina. So let's uh, touch on this too. What's this moment like in the cage then afterwards? I know you just touched a little bit on it. I was wondering, no, like after a fight, everybody seems seems different. Is, is it kind of like some awkwardness? Like you're there celebrating, they're obviously upset, and, th and you try to have this moment of like, hey, you know, good job. Like I, I feel like it has to be a very awkward situation inside of the octagon after a fight, no matter what side you're on. It is. It is. And it, like it doesn't matter – win or lose, it's always going to be a little awkward, you know, I mean, because I'm up, I'm celebrating, I'm so excited, you know, and then of course, the other person, I've been on the losing side. So I know how it feels. And it's not fun. I mean, yeah, you want to, you want to congratulate, I guess, your opponent, but at the same time, you're, I don't know, you're not happy, you're upset. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just, it can be awkward. All right, let's get into what's next for you now. Of course, you got the win here. Uh, we're in May. You got out of the fight unharmed. Do you want to get two more fights in possibly? I imagine definitely one more fight by the end of the year. Do you think you may be able to get two in even? I don't know. I mean, I could, I mean, if I could get three in, that would be great. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I guess, talk about this activity then. Like, how, how tough is this? I hear fighters say, like, oh, I would love to fight three or four times a year, and Chael Sonnen actually brings this up on his podcast quite a bit, that his biggest regret about the sport is a lot of times you can only do it three times max in one year. Like, But then yet you see somebody like Kevin Holland, for example, that somehow fights, like, six times in a year. How exactly, like, what's the, is there, like, a secret to getting these fights? Like, how's the UFC presented? Do they come to you quickly, or do you have to contact them and say, hey, I want to get three or four fights in? Like, how do you go about trying to accomplish this? Well, I mean, I, I can tell the I can tell the matchmaker McMaynard, you know, that I'm interested in getting a, a quick turnaround fight. So if anything comes available, you know, just you know, let me know, and if I'm able to take it, I you know would gladly take it. So really, that's all that it is, you know. Or you let your manager know, and your manager relays the message. Um, and that doesn't always happen. I mean, you don't. You I mean, like. You, you don't always, you don't always get what you want. So, I mean, I'm sure that I could get another fight, you know, within, I think, you know, a month or two, but, um, Tony's fight in, is in July. So, you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not sure like what I want to do. I would like to fight again, maybe before then, but I don't want to necessarily like, um, I don't want to like not be able to focus on his fight. You know, I want him to be able to focus for himself. How much of this too is like strategy on your own when you're trying to book a fight too? Because I, like you were saying, if you really wanted a fight really quickly, the UFC can make that happen for you. But you're in a spot where you were just you're number eleven. You beat the number twelve ranked fighter. I haven't seen the updated rankings. You may even be in the top ten now. I imagine, you know, there has to be some strategic uh, strategy to this too, right? That you want to fight somebody ranked above you to help climb the ladder, right? Of course. Yes. And I mean, that's the goal. Cause you know, we both want, we all want to climb the ladder. So I would assume that they would give me somebody that's ranked above me, um, whoever that is. And, um, as, as far as getting, getting the matchup and the turnaround, like I just have to let, I just have to be adamant about it and let them know that I'm serious. But if I'm, if I'm not, if I'm not confident about getting a turnaround fight, then I don't want to say anything, you know, because I also, I, I need, to make sure that like my camps are good. Cause I've been going out of town for my camps. I've been going to Colorado and California. I, I train here too, but at the same time, I've been needing to get out of town to get the work that I need for a fight camp. So I would still like to be able to get a, a little bit of a notice for a fight, you know, that way that I can prepare and I can get my coaches all involved.
because unfortunately for me, my coaches are scattered. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were talking about traveling there. I wanted to ask you about Tisha Torres. I saw, I believe it was on your Instagram or on your Facebook, somewhere that you and Tisha were training to, together a little bit before this fight. Can you just talk a little bit about what it was like training with Tisha and how she kind of helped you in preparation for this fight? I've trained with Tisha a couple of times now and, you know, I really enjoy working with her. I think, you know, she's such a great fighter. She's very skilled. Um, she's like, there's a lot in such a tiny little package, you know I mean? Like she's, she helps me out tremendously because she is, she, she can fight both Orthodox and Southpaw and she is very quick on her feet. She's it, very explosive. So, I mean, for me to be able to keep up with her, you know, it's, it's exhausting, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I did get to work with her a little bit for this fight and, um, you know, I'm hoping to get back out there and get some more work in with her. She said that for her next fight camp, she wants me to come out and work with her too. Awesome. And all this traveling too, it does take you away from home. Like you were saying earlier, and you have a daughter at home. You're kind of, it, it makes it tough because even though you're a fighter and you have obviously have to pr prepare for a fight, you still have to be a mom at the end of the day. You know, just how tough is that when you have to pick up and go and as your daughter has school back there in Louisiana and you're off flying to California and being in Colorado as, you know, there's a whole life going on back there in Louisiana. It is. That part is hard because Ainsley is, she's growing up so fast and she's, uh, unfortunately used to me being gone and it's, it sucks because I feel like, you know, maybe our relationship, our relationship is, is suffering too because of it. So whenever I'm home, like I do like, I like to try and spend as much time with her, you know, and I like to try to do, do the things that she wants to do without like spoiling her too much, you know, cause she is used to kind of getting a lot of things her way. And I, I don't necessarily want to always give her her way, but I'm also gone a lot. So when I get back, it's like, I just, I want her to, you know, like, I want us to have fun, you know, and, and I want her to have fun. But that I would say that traveling and being out of town a lot really does make it hard. And, you know, she's she's here all the time and she doesn't ever get to go with me. So um, that's just the only the downfall, you know. Well, now that the school year is ending, like, will you guys do a little family summer vacation and, and kind of do some traveling that's more fun as opposed to, to traveling and, you know, doing work all the time? Yeah, I'm actually hoping. No, I mean, I, I won't say, like, we're going to definitely do, like, a whole lot of traveling. But I do plan on taking her to the beach, you know, and I've already talked to my sister and we're going to try to get, like, she's going to bring her daughter and we're, we're planning on maybe t doing like a little uh, weekend or, you know, four day vacation, like probably to Florida. Florida sounds like the best place right now. <laughs> what part of Florida are you going to go to? We were talking about the keys, maybe, you know, I mean, somewhere around the keys. Cause that's, that's, um, you know, cause at first they were like, Ooh, Jamaica. And we're like, uh, I don't, well, I mean, that would be very expensive. And then of course passports and then traveling. I'm like, I don't think that, you know, traveling to Jamaica is going to be that easy. I don't know. Everything's COVID-19, you know I mean? Everybody's travel, travel stipulations are different. So I'm thinking Florida and the Keys, you know, that's kind of like a paradise area. So let's just see about that. Makes sense. All right, Andrew, we covered a lot of different topics here today. Uh, one last thing that before we roll out, I do want to end with one more thing from UFC 262 and I want to get your opinion on it. I'm sure you saw the main event. That was absolutely crazy. I was actually at a bar watching the, the main event, and when Chandler, like he was going to have the win, everybody's going crazy, standing up, yelling, screaming. Then I was at the second round, and we all saw what happened when Oliver got that. The other way around, everybody's yelling and screaming. There's kind of this look of shock, like, how the hell did that just happen? He was just rocked right at the end of the last round. Just what was your thoughts on that crazy main event that we all saw? Man, the first, you know, in the first round, like you said, I thought Charles had, I mean, I, I thought that Chandler had it, you know, I really thought that he was going to finish Charles and uh, it looked like it, you know, we were like, oh, like, oh my God, you know, and I mean, Charles was just able to like hang in there, you know, and um, unfortunately for Chandler, he ended up going to the ground and he let him recover. And um, I think had he stood on his feet and maybe picked his shots or whatever, he might would have finished that round. Who's, who knows? But um, I did not expect uh, Oliveira to go out there in the second round and just clip him so quickly like that. I mean, that was that was incredible. I mean, you know, you, who could ask 
you can ask for anything better for a fighter. You know, I mean, for someone, for me, if I almost got clipped and, you know, I was wobbling it, I was down that first round. I mean, going out there in the first 10 seconds and then clipping and finishing, you know, like in the first 20 seconds, I think that's, that's incredible. You know, I was, I was proud, you know, happy for Oliver. He, d- he deserves it, you know? Yeah, definitely. Nice story too there, how he grew up uh, in the poor area of Brazil there, coming out of uh, at a really tough area and making it to the top the way how he did. Uh, great story. And Andrew, we're going to look forward to seeing what you do next. Hopefully you do get a few uh, extra fights in this year. Uh, before you're all out though, social media, management, sponsors, anything that you need to plug, please feel free to do so. Um, yeah, uh, Dave Hirschbane's my manager. I like to thank Dave. Uh, on my coaches, my corners, you know, uh, Tony Kelly, Jim West, uh, Justin Halton, and I got AMS Racing, I got John and John Trucking Company, um, Roof, uh, Frontier Roofing, uh, Victory Beef, Punch Gunk, Healing Panda, um, Frequency Interrupted, and hmm. Probably a few more, but I'm not going to like, <laughs> I don't know which ones I already, already think, but you know, everybody, all my sponsors who helped me for this fight camp, I really do appreciate it. Oh, Red River Range in Shreveport. Um, I could not have done this fight camp without you guys. So thank you. And uh, hopefully we can work together more in the future. All right, guys, there you have it. That was Andrea Leap, who picked up a big win again uh, last week at UFC 262. Looking forward to seeing what she does now in the future. Hopefully, we'll be having a busy 2021 with her, of course. Like you heard her say there, she wants to get three or four fights in. So, best of luck to Andrea the rest of the year. And to everybody out there, as a reminder, like I always do, Keep going to my MMA news. We have a lot of great content that comes out there seven days a week. Also, uh, why don't you go down to the bottom here, give a little subscribe action if you haven't done so yet. When you subscribe to this YouTube channel, you'll be able to get alerted and see all the interviews as they get published because we have a lot of great guests that come here to my MMA news. We'll see you later, everybody.